Welcome back to Express to Orbit Rockets Only. So this is episode three and probably the last episode because in this episode, we're gonna be going for orbit. We're gonna try and complete the two main orbital contracts that are challenging, the first artificial satellite contract and the first scientific satellite contract. So if we look right now, you can see we're building an Argon 3 sounding rocket. We'll talk about that in a second. The tech, we have now got the tech so we can do our first artificial satellite, but we don't have the tech yet to do first scientific satellite because we need to get satellite era science to do that. And ideally, we'd like early avionics and probes. So that's gonna take us another 350 days, 360 days to get. We're well within our window to actually do that. That's not gonna be a problem for us. Now, we could at this moment go and build this first artificial satellite craft and we're gonna build it but we're still going to launch this Argon 3. The main reason being, once we go into orbit, we lose all of these sounding rocket contracts and we have saved up lovely the time on this downrange contract. So you can see it wants 350 units of sounding rocket payload, 360 kilometers downrange. We're actually gonna take that because we've been letting it build up now. So it's at 221%. It's gonna give us almost, what, what's 40, 44,000 for taking it and completing it, which is two build points. And uh, we can then use that for just ramping up a bit of the research and things like that. So we're gonna take that. And while we're actually building that vessel, we're gonna also spend our money and build our first orbital craft. So let's go to the VAB and have a look at what we're gonna use for that. All right, so here we are in the VAB and you can see we've got the Argon 5-2001. The 001 is to remind me, this is our first orbital craft and you can see it's it's hideous the color is horrible but we'll, we'll talk about why and well there's no reason why it's the color i'm using um, we'll talk about the craft in a second what i will point out is you can see our launch complex our 60 ton pad we have three more days on it so that's going to be available perfectly in time for us this craft actually has a mass of 41 tons we could actually go bigger we could actually put a couple of engines on the bottom there and make it make it bigger but we, we we've decided not to so let's have a look what we've got this craft currently has uh, quite a bit of delta v it's actually got more than it needs for this first launch and what we could do is you can see here we've got these side boosters on here we could actually put extra section, sections of side boosters on if we want these side boosters you don't really need them but i want a nice big push off the pad and that's why they're there um, if they fail uh, they're likely to fail on on ignition in which case we just roll the craft in and start again so these are rd 200s I would not use them for much else. Um, if I do a Russian version of this, they actually can have other purposes, but they're just a nice solid liquid booster stage. We have the RD100 series here, which we are uprating to the 103. And we're gonna have to pay for that because I haven't actually done that yet. So if we if we see there our money balance, what we do is if we go here, we'll purchase that. That's 50,000. That's a big chunk of our funds done straight away. What else have we got? Well. The second stage, the second real stage is, and I'll click on it, is a stenter. Yeah, I'm using a stenter booster because uh, this is available. It is, it's a reasonably interesting engine. It's a British engine. And of course I like my British craft. Um, you can see that it is, it's got one config. It's got a reasonable sort of, it's not brilliant actually. Um, you can use others to be fair. Um, it does not require, uh, it does not require pressurized engines, uh, pressurized tanks, and that's part of the positive with this. We don't have to have pressurized tanks for it. So it sort of wins out over some of the other craft. You could, if you were interested in doing so, you could use the RL uh, XLR11, and I think the second config of that, or the third config of that, which would be, I think, unlocked at this point, doesn't require pressurized tanks either. And then on the top, we have a little bumper stage there, which has a an error beyond, which has been upgraded to the AJ27. Let's have a look at this, where Oh, that's the fairing. We don't want the fairing. We want the engine, which is tucked in there. There we go. That's the Arabic. And that's tucked in there. And you can see that's on the AJ1027. And actually, that'll need to be purchased as well. That's 3,000. That's nothing. So we've, we've spent that there. Now, what else have we got? Well, we have now got... Um, We've got tanks that are going to be aluminium two, or they're the separate second sort of upgraded uh, separate tanks. We haven't gone for integral. We don't have the tech for that yet. Um, and that's pretty much the craft. I will again make this available for everybody to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
basically buy all the parts I need to because we've got things like these avionics are the uh, prototype avionics and things like that. We need to we need to purchase all those and then I'll come back to you as we're about to build it and you can see uh, when I've tooled everything and all that just how long it's going to take. Right, so we're just about to do the tooling for this craft. So it's going to be 37,000 for the tooling. So we're going to purchase that tooling. Ticks it right down to 176 days. However, there is one more thing we need to do, which is before we do anything, we're going to save it. We're going to go to launch and you'll see it then requires that we spend some more money. It will also give us a warning because that pad is not finished yet. And it'll say, oh, you haven't, you haven't reached the requirement things. That doesn't matter. We don't mind about that. Um, it's going to cost us money for the stented booster, for the attitude rets, because I am using, ah, yes. One of the things that I have, and we've had questions about this, is I have um, internal attitude jets. It's a little mod I like to use. Um, you should be able to load the craft up without it, and it will just have them missing, I believe, because they're not a part that anything else attaches to, and you can put your own on, or grab it from Seacan or wherever. If you want, I will try and find a link to it. If anybody needs me to put a link down below, please comment. Um, and that's one of the little additions that I have in the series. But anyway, um, and then it's got all these other things that need to do. So that's gonna cost us another 42, so we'll do that. There we go, we're down to 73. So we actually saved more money than we could have. So we could have actually spent some more points on, on build and stuff like that. However, before we actually have a look at this and we'll just uh, check the build queue. Is it on it? It is now on it. We're gonna build two of them uh, because, well, it's always a good idea to have another one. There we go. Um, one of the things to keep in mind at this point is this craft here is capable because you can put extra boosters like this on the side and, and run it better and things like that. It is capable of doing most of these early missions, in fact, all of them, I think. The thing to remember, however, is um, you're going to want to have a nice, consistent, guided orbital launch. This has got an, an unguided top stage. Once you finish the four starting orbital contracts, you're going to want a craft that's probably got a better payload to orbit than this that doesn't just complete the mission. So you're going to start to have to think about what money you're going to spend. If you're going the Russian route, you're going to spend, what, 150000 on something like an RD-107 or a 108. If you're going the American route, you're going to spend some money equivalent on those engines as well. Then you've got upper stage engines like AJ-10s or RD-109s, 105s, whatever you want to use. So you're looking at maybe... 200,000 you need. Now you will get for completing one of these contracts, the scientific one, you will get a big chunk of cash, which you can invest in that. But you've also got things like if you want to go to integral tanks, and that would be a move that I would definitely do. You're going to need about 50,000 for that as well. So be aware of that. You're going to have to have other contracts going on. There are other missions you can still do once this is going on. I'm going to show you that in a second. But you're gonna need some cash for that. So be aware of that. Don't just try and keep spending things. There is a point and you're reaching it now in, in sort of speed running where sometimes it can be detrimental to push all your cash forward because you need to be looking at the next step. Up until this point, we've basically pushed all of our cash to the point where we were ready to, to get the research done. We saved the money for this rocket and now we could just keep spending money on bill points and research points and things like that. But you're gonna to have to acquire money somewhere to, to go to the next step of Rocket. You're always gonna to have to have that investment. So we're gonna go back to the main screen. I'm gonna quickly probably uh, voice over time-lapse the, um, the next mission, and then we're gonna go and launch this one and we'll talk about the next steps. So be right back. Now, despite what I just said about being right back when we launch the next craft, I'm gonna do one thing, and this is this is my choice. We've got, we've got 68,000 here and um, that's three build points, and we're hopefully going to get some money from the Argon 3, which would give us money to roll these out. So 8,000 is going to be more than enough for, for our, our needs, I think, for this. So I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to get some upgrade points. We're going to get three of them, and this is uh, it's a while since we've spent these. So I'm looking at this, and I'm going, you know what? I want, I want to put a, a couple in my R&D. We're going to keep pumping that up, and then we're going to put a bit more in here. Now... I'm not even considering upgrading this uh, this VAB yet. I'm going to keep pumping it until it gets to about one build point per second. So that's going to be in a while. That's probably going to be after we're orbital, after we've done all those things. But once it, it's at one build point per second, you really need to upgrade it and get your second line because that second line upgrades twice as quickly. It's wonderful. Third line, even quicker still. So you, you there is diminishing returns from just pumping points into that, that first build rate. So we're going to accelerate through you can see we've dropped our time here quite significant and our build time has dropped a little bit. We've lost a few days there, which is good. We're gonna 
rush through and um, I will see you at this launch. Right, you find us launching our our sounding rocket. I suppose you could say it's a sounding rocket. Yeah, it's sort of control. It's controlled, but anyway, it's a sounding rocket. So this is our sounding rocket downrange booster development type contract, and you know we're just getting some more experience on these engines, which will transfer hopefully to the 103. So um, you could miss this this craft out. You could actually just you know go for. Go, go straight to your orbital craft and not do this one. You could do the, the five or six missions we've done before this in the second episode, then jump straight into that orbital craft when you've got the tech. Um, that would definitely mean that you would be orbital before the end of 1952. As it is, we're going to be touch and go as to whether we are. I think we're probably going to miss it. Um, but it does mean that you miss out on this big chunk of funds that we're getting on this craft. And it's very easy to miss out on nice sounding rocket payload sort of contract money that's easy to get and slow yourself down later on. So this is a choice you can make. And I would suggest actually, you know, do a save, do a load, see what you actually get out of it and see what the difference is, because I think you'll find it really interesting. Right. We're just coming up now to our uh, required apoapsis and, and all sorts. I'm going to let this thing fly along, complete the contract, and I will see you back down for the orbital mission. So with that mission complete, we've got a little bit of extra cash. We can uh, add that to our bank there and we can see that. We've got to wait 168 days for the Argon 5 to build. Um, we've got this tech going along, but what we could do is, or what we are gonna do is, we're gonna take another contract. We're gonna take this advanced biological suborbital because once we get the first orbit contract done, we're gonna have a little bit of gap in time. And so we're gonna take this now because we can. Um, just so that we've got the cash on hand and we're then going to uh, to get an upgrade point just just one we could get two we're not going to we need we want to have a bit of cash left because we need to wait 160 days or whatever to to do stuff so we're going to take one upgrade point we're going to put it into the r d there we go and we can see that our tech is now almost 100 days for each one so we're now looking at 270 days which gives a big bit of leeway for that art first uh, first scientific satellite we've got a bit of time there for, for building that craft and remember we're going to start getting some more money in at that point as well so we can start accelerating a little bit so we are now going to move along to the launch of this first satellite and um, what i will actually do is i will show you the craft we're going to build as well for the advanced biological suborbital experiment so I will see you in about 168 days. Right, we are 168 days gone and you can see that our funds are below that 20,000 mark. That would have meant that if we'd have taken an extra, an extra upgrade point, we would be bankrupt right now. So we wouldn't be able to roll this out. So we're gonna roll this out to the 60 ton pad. That's gonna take another chunk of money. And because we can't actually get any more upgrade points, we're going to start building the craft for this suborbital experiment, or we're going to put it on the stack, shall we say. So let me go and do that, and I'll show you what I've come up with. Right, here we are with the craft, which is going to call this the Argon 5 and double O, because it has no upper stage as such, and this is advanced bio one, and you can see if I if I zoom in a little bit, you will see we've got the uh, probe car on the top there, is the uh, is, oh, it's on starting. We could actually change it. We'll leave it on starting, though, because uh, we, we don't need to worry too much about what its capability is. Um, do we want to put any science on it? Eh, no, we don't need to worry about that. So inside here, we've got, uh, we've got our probe core there. It's going to act like our heat shield. We've got a parachute, very much like we did for our um, recovery of film cameras. We've got our advanced biological camera thing unit there. And then around that here, we actually have this procedural tank and it's a hollow cone, okay? And we've got the inner section as being slightly larger than the, the uh, diameter of this advanced biological capsule. Um, and it's just surrounding it. And I think it looks quite cool. It's like the idea of all of the equipment associated with the biological capsule is, is round the outside of it. It's sort of logical. Instead of having it above or below it, it sort of makes a bit more sense. So that's that. We will need to tool it, but what we've actually tried to do is uh, I've tried to reuse some stuff. So this fairing here should be the fairing that we used on the film return system. So let's just check. Yeah, there we go. So we've got the stringers and the procedural tank. So that procedural tank is going to be uh, is going to be this one up here that's got the uh, the sounding payload or whatever it is that's in there. And then we have the uh, the structural tank. It's just this bit here, this adapter. Now I could have gone for a fuel tank, put more fuel in this, but 
I don't think we need it. We've got enough there and it was uh, reasonably cheap to tool. So I'm not too worried about that. So we're gonna tool those, uh, tool all. That's gonna cost us 6,000 funds. That's not brilliant, but you know what? We can do that mission a couple of times for, for an expense. It's not terrible. It takes 108 days. So we're gonna build that, um, save it first of all. Then we're gonna build a one copy Oh, actually, we want to check these. So we've got decoupling and that there first. Yeah, that's wonderful. So we're going to save it. We're going to build one copy. It's going to cost us a little bit of funds for these parts. And then we're going to build another copy. So we've got two copies of that. And now we're down to 5,000 for our launch, which is fine. We know that we need less than that for this launch. And actually bringing the next craft out, we will have enough funds there for that as well. So that's good. So even if this launch goes wrong, we're fine. Right, it is the 14th of February 1953 and we are going for our first orbital launch. So we're just gonna pull this down, have a look at it. So our aim is 150 kilometer perigee and that's it, we just gotta be stable in orbit. So if we'd have not launched our sounding rocket before this, we could have actually got this craft into orbit before the end of 1952, but we would have missed out on about 50,000 funds. So uh, you, you, you're sort of playing a little bit of a game there as to which is the most the best way to do it. Um, depending upon whether you're gonna put money from this into uh, upgrade points or not, you might wanna try and get this one completed first. It's really up to you. So. We're gonna launch this thing. Engines are on, start it up. Of course, at this point, if you have an engine failure, you can wheel it back in, bring it back out, and uh, let's see how this goes. And we are off, there we are, we have taken off. We are on, on route, on flight, as it were. Um, those side boosters will burn off reasonably quickly. Um, we just gotta keep an eye on that, and we're gonna start turning over at about now. We're gonna go five degrees over. And um, we don't need to worry about any particular orbit, anything like that, all we're aiming for is that 150. So this first stage is pretty simple. You've got your side boosters pushing you up. We can actually put it onto the pitch control there like so side boosters pushing you up through the atmosphere and then we'll decouple them when they get to burn out and they have little a little thrusters on the side that sh should push them away from the craft we've got the sunset or sunrise actually over there which is making the clouds very interesting we're getting towards oh we've got one side boosters cut out but we've got gimbal on the engines which will hold it so now we just got to wait for the uh, for the other one to go and then we'll just decouple we're still getting some push from it so we're okay with that this one is pretty much gone though and there we go Get rid of both the gimbals kick in oh they destroy each themselves that's okay right now we are on our way and we are hoping that we have the delta v required for this with that side booster going early we might not we will have to see we carried a bit of extra mass for a while there but this main engine is the one that we've we're hopeful we're hopeful this should have enough uh, data points now that it's going to do okay we've got another 50 seconds on it we need this to get up to a reasonable sort of uh altitude a reasonable speed we need to get up out the thick thick atmosphere because this stage does not do well otherwise right we've got some control on that i want to actually move this engine down into here because we're going to go straight to it and then i think we're going to also move that down there as well so that's a change we've made so there we are we are now gonna go back to surface and i want to take this to oh i don't know 25 there we go there we are so we can see that we are we're doing okay now we're now over the 50 so we're going to put it onto zero there we go well over the 50 because we kept ourselves burning quite steep there but it will make this a little easier once we get to it the next stage so there we go we're burning out and gonna stage there we go oh and our controls are okay so we're just going to check um, everything seems okay there. We turn our RCS on because we need the RCS to actually steer this. This does not have a gimbal. This is the stenter engine, does not have a gimbal. You can see the little HTP tanks there. Now, these RCS are actually gonna run off the HTP in this tank as well as sort of the excess where they can. The way that it's feeding, because of the way RO works and everything, these tanks and these tanks, they will feed it equally. So what I've actually done is I've locked these tanks. Um, primarily because otherwise you end up with it, it, it feeds off differently um, but you can you can do it either way what would actually happen is um, even with the small small tank of this the residuals in here would end up running the RCS later on um, so that's something to be aware of so this engine is going to burn to completion like so and then we're going to turn off the uh, the thrust let's get this going we're going to be at completion 
and a little bit more. We're now breaking speed records, that's what we've got there. Turn off the RCS because it will actually fire these if we don't. So we have some spin rotor, spin, spin stabilization systems there. Our RCS is still on, but we don't have forward thrust, so these will not be firing. When we activate forward thrust, these will start firing. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until we get near to our APWAP. So you can see we're gonna have about 40 seconds of burn on this to get us to, to orbital speed. That's what we're aiming for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this float up and I'm gonna, we can just speed this along a little bit. When we get to about 40 seconds, we need to start thinking about what we're doing. So there we go. So we wanna fire this at about 20 seconds. Uh, RCS is on. We're going to start up our thrust now. And then we're gonna start our spin. Let's get our spin going. There we go. Spin is going. We've activated those spin motors there. We don't need much spin. And then we're going to fire engines. There we go. Now, we do not have any avionics on this. We just have a science car. So we are hoping that this thing is going to get to orbit. We're going to see how high it gets to orbit. Hopefully this will complete our mission. So we're over the 150 when we're firing and we're firing horizontally. So we should hopefully there we go we've gone past our app apps now that probe behind us is now run out of electricity we're coming up we've got about a whole 1000 1500 left this is going to be interesting are we going to make it oh we've got some we've got some science coming back already it's going to be good i think we've got it i think we've got it yeah we've got it we well got it and there we go well up so we actually almost have the right orbit for scientific satellite here we just have to put a little bit more of a push upwards before we do our before we do our circularization so this craft potentially has it in it to do that launch so now we've just got to wait for our two minutes while that's going on though what have we actually got on board this craft so we have a mass spec temperature and pressure probe those are the three science we have we didn't put any biological samples because this thing isn't coming back down but Mass spec has gone. You can see, even though we had one of those initial boosters fail partway on the launch, we still managed to get to orbit. And that's part of the reason why we have them, because it gives us just a little bit extra delta V just in case. If we'd have had a, a reduction in efficiency of one of them or in both of them, we'd have still hopefully made it to orbit. Or if you get both of them fail, you can just get rid of them and, and you've not really lost anything then. Uh, we had the worst possible sort of situation there, which was one of them went and the other one, the other one was fine. In that case, you could potentially go down and actually decouple the one. If it was early on, I would actually be tempted to decouple the booster that would, that had a fault. Um, if you have a fault on launch, uh, you can wheel them back in. Just you know, make sure the engines start up, and then before you actually decouple the clamps, if they've had an engine failure, wheel it back in. You know, turn it off, wheel it back in. It'll do the repair, reset it. You can go into edit mode if you really want to, and then just put a new version of the craft there and it'll reset everything and it will take you no time at all to do that it's just the time wheeling in and out um, so this craft is designed to basically not have a problem those side boosters can be dodgy they can be a problem so equally you could put different engines on there if you want you could put an you know you've got mass there to actually put potentially another two you could put two uh, rd 130s uh, 103s on underneath there if you wanted to make a really wide base um, and that was an, that's an option you could go for. There's lots of different things you can do. So we have now completed our orbit. There we go. Finished first artificial satellite finished, but that is not the end of this series. So I am going to go away. We will um, launch the first of our advanced, uh, advanced biological satellites. I will probably do a voiceover of that. And then we can come back and think about this first scientific satellite and what the steps are to get that. We can actually look at that here. It needs to be stable for a day. It needs to be able to communicate this uh, this rear, rear science from the low Earth orbit. And importantly, it's got to have these app, this Apple apps over 1.5 thousand kilometers. And it's got to have this pair apps up between 200 and 900. So if we went up a little bit sort of steeper, if that second stage of ours, if we'd actually had that point upwards a little bit, just to give us that extra little bit of height, we could have done that with this launch. The only thing we didn't have was the cosmic ray science. And uh, let's actually do a little check. What's our like our battery life on this? Because that's going to be important. We may need to, one of the things we're looking at is upgrading the avionics. We may not need to do that though. Let's have a let's have a peek uh, on here, and we want to go with this one. 
and show me the info. So we have a day and three hours, right? So we might actually, if we disabled, actually let's try this, let's disable all of these things. Does it do anything? No. So we could potentially do that if we did that off. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's actually added, added extra hours on there. So if we actually just, uh, we'll leave that running as it is, we'll get some science off that as it goes. So let me go and launch the, uh, the advanced biological science uh, capsule mission and uh, I'll voice that over and then we'll get back to the base and uh, talk about everything. So see you in a minute. Well, I have lied to you yet again by saying that we we're going to launch another craft. I'll do that in a second and, and voice over it. But one thing you need to think about is you've now got a chunk of funds there. You have just got 180,000, but we've got 180,000. We were almost empty. So we've got 180,000. The first thing we can do is we can actually get rid of this craft here. So we can we can basically scrap that. You could, if you wanted, you've been a little cheaty, you could actually keep it because you've got some build time in it already. You could keep it and you could add in the experiment that you want. But I think that's a little cheaty because particularly the the, the payload is, is you know, it, it's 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 changing sort of we'll do that we could also we can operate the craft a little bit um in latest versions and i'm actually recording this just after a, another version has come out so our rp1 constantly changing our old constantly changing you can now actually merge craft and things like that i believe in uh, in the newest versions of uh, kct so you may decide that actually you want to build your you want to start building this rocket straight away so that when you build the probe you can just stick the two together and, and reduce the costs of things and that that is an option that is another potential speed route when uh, potentially when i i upgrade this version on we try the new version we will try another one of these like that what i will say and i'll say this all the way through if you want to see different versions of this you want to see it in new versions you want to see with different limitations please comment down below tell me what you think and we'll do other versions because I, I quite like this short format of having just a few episodes to, to achieve a target so um with this funds let's actually go and have a look so mission wise we think thank you very much Jane. we have uh this contract still come to come and it's going to pay us almost almost three hundred thousand. Uh, it's a big chunk. We've already got the, the advance. We're going to have 250,000, which is a big chunk towards developing another rocket. Um, what I would ideally do, and this is this is me suggesting, I would actually, because of um, the science we've now got, I would be getting satellite era, I'd be getting uh, orbital rocketry, and then I'd be getting orbital rocketry there as well. And then I would probably, um, if it was me, go for either a Thor or a, uh, a Russian something with an RD-107, is it? 107 is, no, 108, RD-108. And then for your upper stage, I would actually go to use the RD-105. That means that you're going to be spending, you know, 60,000 for that. You're going to be spending, uh, what's that, 100, 130 something thousand for that. So you're looking at 190 plus. I'd also be looking at getting uh, integral tanks, which is another uh, 45. So you're looking at, you know, approaching 200, 225,000 just for those three parts. That is covered by that, that contract equally. Um, we're going to hopefully get some other contracts out of this rocket. So as long as you budget in your mind, and I will say now a 60 ton pad, if you're going to go for either a, a Thor type craft or for a, uh, a Russian sort of Thor, Thor equivalent, would that be? Um, you, you can do that with a 60 ton pad. You can start putting contracts up and then you can also go, you know what, we're going to have lunar missions. So we're going to get, you know, funds for the start of lunar missions. You might want to upgrade pads. It might be at this point that you decide you want 150 ton pad because you want to keep going fast. And again, if you are continuing the speed run, maybe you want to put that in there. Um, so that's an option. So just to, to give you a little look at that, if we actually went and go, let's put a new pad in, a 150 ton pad, we're looking at taking most of that away. So that is an option there. And it's one I would probably go for because particularly um, if you're going the American route, your payload to orbit on the 60 ton pan is potentially not as good as the Russian. So that's possibly how I would go. I would probably look at a 150 ton pad because it can take quite a while to build you're looking at a two years to build um, and of course we're going to put points in other things but it's still going to be two years to build so we're not doing that so we're going to just spend some upgrade points but not many we're going to we're going to get a few we're going to take one two more and that's going to take my r d up to 34 that means we've got twice as much as the vab what's that done for our not that for our tech um we're looking at 90 days we're looking at 100 days until we're ready to build this craft 
which will give us 280 days, which is probably about enough to build two of them. Um, so we'll see, yeah, because look, that's, yeah, maybe not two of them, but we could rush build if we needed to, if we failed that first launch. Um, we're also going to do this, which is going to give us some money. So I'm actually going to put, you know what, we're going to put, a, we're going to put a point into the VAB. We haven't done this for a while. In fact, we're going to put two in just to, just to help us along a little bit and be prepared. So this is now going to finish in 99 days, which means that we're ready straight away to build the next craft, which I think is a, a brilliant idea. We can just, as soon as this tech is done, we'll be ready to basically build the next craft and we can have, use a bit of this on the way. So we're going to get rid of this, scrap that. Yes, we do. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to launch this and then we'll, you can see that flying or we'll complete that mission or I'll, I'll just voice over the middle of it. And then we'll get on to our final flight before the end of this series. Right. One thing I did not take into account is the, uh, the, the mass spec that we put on our craft that's gone into orbit has just given us enough science to get another point. So we're going to put that into the R&D because why not? There we go. And that is probably going to bring that down. Yes, significantly. So they're now actually almost on basically the same time. So while this is being wheeled out, we can start building our next craft, which is wonderful because we may need to buy some parts for it and we've got the funds for it and everything. So let me go wheel this out. I will put the, uh, if, if our science finishes while this is wheeling out, I'll actually put the other craft together. And all it is, is adding in that, that piece of science equipment to the craft and then putting it in the build queue. So that'll do that off camera. Um, and I'll show you that launch as well. And then we're done. So let's get moving. All right, while we're waiting for our advanced biological capsule to roll out onto the pad, I've actually come in because our science has finished researching and we're gonna, we're gonna prep this argon 42002 and the big changes are we've we've put those extra science experiments into the top here so if i if i manage to click on here somewhere where are we wherever the probe e core is there we go where, where are we where are we you're in here somewhere i know you are where are you anyway wherever that e oh there no oh there we are there we are no it anyway we've got the we've got a film camera on there and we've got our um Mm, our uh, Geiger Muller on there. Um, also, because we waited and we actually, we took our time a little bit more than we probably could have, we've now got the next level of avionics. So all of the avionics have been moved up to early avionics. Uh, that means that they're a lot lighter, which means we've got much more Delta V, but it also means this, this top probe now has avionics that, oh, there you go. You can now see what we've got, uh, cosmic ray and uh, visual imaging. Uh, it's now got avionics that will last it for a number of days, even on full full sort of uh, antenna usage. It will last a number of days. So we can get that science as it's going around the planet and, and everything like that. But it will also allow us to complete the mission, which is uh, important because we've got to have... Basically, we've got to spend 24 hours collecting data is what this mission requires. I believe there is a hidden experiment that you don't see, which is the cosmic ray one that takes, I think it's 24 hours to do basically. If it's been in orbit and it's doing it for 24 hours, you get it. Um, and we've got to have stability for 24 hours. Um, I've rearranged some of the, the sequence of these just to, to make a bit more logical sense for us. So I don't have to do it through the launch, but that is done. Tooling this has cost us a bit of money. It's a, a few a few thousand that's come out of here. Um, tooling, I think was about 6,000 for the for the, all these different parts, which is quite a lot, but it helped drop the time down for build and actually getting access to the the science equipment and things like that will have cost us time uh, funds so if we do this there we go we're ready to build and we've built one there um so we've got that at the bottom in fact i've got i've got three need to need to get rid of one of those get rid of that um we're gonna push that one up we're gonna push that one up as well so that's 159 days we'll be going for that so i'm going to show you a quick clip to this one of it completing its mission and then we're on for the big one Right, so we're just going to fire this rocket up and I've got this on speedy, speedy up mode. So this is, again, it's just an advanced biological capsule and we're not actually going to get much in the way of science from this, but we're going to get a bit of funding from it and it starts the process of completing these missions. You don't actually have to put this one in. You could, as I've said before, you can you can chop and change things around. You could actually rush the, uh, the, the other rocket along, do its building work and then put the, the science part on afterwards if you really wanted to. You could actually complete this easily inside sort of 1953 instead of what we're at in the moment, which is, uh, you know, we're halfway through 1953. So we could be a lot further on if we'd actually pushed it, but we're, we're trying to be none too crazy on this. So this comes through the atmosphere. Again, we use the uh, the avionics probe core as basically a heat shield because this thing doesn't really get that hot. 
with that mission successful, we are now ready for our next satellite launch. Now, I will point out at this point, if we look at the missions available, you could have, and you, this was a choice you could make, instead of taking that advanced biological uh, suborbital experiment that we took, um, you could actually have taken one of these two, the first solar, I think, could you do that? No, I think you have to have got, uh, thingy. but now you can actually select first solar or first polar orbit satellite. And for this launch actually, for first scientific, with our craft, I would imagine that at least one of these would be possible. So, you know, if you want to go faster, you can actually squeeze them in there. You could potentially do both because we've lightened the load of our, our, our satellite, our payload um, on the top and we've put that new avionics on. It uses very little electricity. So that is when you can definitely get a first solar powered satellite working reasonably well, primarily because it's got to last 14 days in orbit. It's got to have a reasonably high periapse, which matches sort of what you've got to do with the scientific one anyway. Um, so you could combine those. Equally, you know, launching Polar, well, that's an opportunity as well. That's just literally our craft is able to, should be able to do that as it is. So you can combine two or three of these. You could take both of them. I'm not going to take them because I'm going for the sort of not too hard approach. And I know I know in the first episode we did the, the crazy third launch, but uh, you could do that as two separate launches. But if you wanted to, you could accept these and you could stick a, a few solar panels onto that top probe and it would probably work. I would imagine it would work. Uh, alternatively, you could actually take this, which is uh, past the Kerman Nime crude, and you could really brush for capsules. And some people will do that straight away and do that. I'm not going to accept them. I'm not going to accept any other contracts right now. We're going to just sit with the money we have. What I will do is I will also make this save file available. So if you want to continue on from where I am, uh, that will be available as well. So you'll be able to have this save file from the point of us completing, which we're going to do in a minute, this launch here, this Argon 52002. That's going to be our launch. And then these ones are sat in the background there. So I'm going to voice over this launch and I'm going to talk to you about some stuff as we go. Um, and uh, anyway, let's get going. So we're going to speed up this one uh, just a smidgen uh, because uh, you, you don't need it to take forever. You've seen pretty much this rocket launch before. Obviously, we've uh, we've operated some of the avionics and things like that and just made it a little bit lighter, a bit more efficient. Um, this craft is reasonably useful if you want to put just standard standard satellite payloads into orbit. And you can see there we get rid of the, uh, the side boosters. But it doesn't have the, the longevity that you really want from your first real launch vehicle, primarily because it's got that unguided uh, sort of bumper stage on the top. And particularly if you're starting out and you're, you're trying to do some of the more complex contracts, that, that becomes a little bit problematic, unless you're going to put you know a more gu a guided stage on top of that, in, in fact. Um, but it does get you part way there. Uh, again, it is pre-orbital tech, so it is pushing it a little bit. Some people call it caveman and so forth. Um, you could, with this craft and with this launch, I think, you can actually complete the the, the uh, solar and the polar contract probably at the same time as well. If you put yourself a solar panel on this and you launch it polar, you could probably actually complete that because this craft does have that capability. The nice bit about it is that controllability of this stage, being able to actually use that that stentor engine to position yourself correctly and very interesting it's very much what a black arrow used in in the british uh, in the british program so it's quite interesting we're using a british engine for it so spinning up like that is very much what black arrow did and then having instead of a liquid booster like this it would have had a solid booster uh, doing this final push and you can see um the other thing you could do is actually uh you could actually think about, do I want to change the upper stage in this? Personally, I would move to brand new engines for your orbital craft. I would go much more, much bigger. I would aim to look at that 60 ton pad and fill it, fill the 60 ton pad because it gives you as much capability as you can then. So this this craft will stay in orbit. It's, it's got a nice uh, probe core in it that takes very little electricity and is actually usable for 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 lunar missions and things like that. Once you get the the communications, the digital communications for lunar range communications down, much much suitable for that. And there we are. That's it. You have your first few satellites in orbit, and it's really up to you now what you do. Um, this playthrough, you can see we've got a big chunk of money, so we could probably invest in and uh, more launch pads we could invest in more research facilities more upgrade points new engines there is enough money from those missions and particularly if you do the polar and the solar which you have the craft to do um if you did them you've definitely got enough money to develop a really nice 
orbital launch class vehicle that can actually do a lot of things and can probably take you to uh, to interactions with with the moon um, and those moon missions will give you a lot of money again which will really help your program get developed so i hope this was useful please comment down below if you liked it tell me what you think was wrong tell you think what was good and uh, until next time have a great one